Một thách sáu. Một list of topic. Okay, it is divided to several parts. First one, we look at and discuss on the features of the Voltex cell. And then we look at to the cell potential. And also, lastly, we'll discuss on the spontaneity of the reaction in a Voltex cell. So this is the example of the redox reaction that is occurred between zinc and copper. So the equation of this reaction is zinc plus copper 2 plus aqueous produce zinc 2 plus aqueous and copper solid. So this bar is actually the zinc solid okay that dip into a solution of the copper so the blue one the blue color of this solution is actually due to the presence of the cu2 plus ion so after some times we'll observe that the blue color start to become pale and then we also observe that there there is a black metal that is deposited at the zinc at the zinc bar what happened is actually a redox reaction that is occur between zinc and copper 2 plus so the zinc will undergo oxidation in this oxidation the zinc in this zinc metal will donate or release its electron and zinc tends to zinc 2 plus and the two electron that release by the zinc metal atom then receive by the copper 2 plus ion, the blue ions in this solution and this copper 2 plus undergo reduction and it turns to the copper solid. So zinc tends to zinc 2 plus from solid tends to ion while the copper 2 plus ion tends to copper solid. So this black precipitate that we observe deposited at the zinc bar is actually the copper solid that is produced when the Cu2 plus undergo reduction. So if we look at to this reaction, the electron are being transferred between zinc to Cu2 plus. However, this system does not generate electrical energy because the oxidizing agent which is the Cu2 plus and also the zinc are in the same beaker. So if we want to measure the electrical charge or how much and electrical energy that can be formed through this reaction, we can physically separate the half reactions and connect them by external circuit. So if we use external circuit, then the electron lost by the zinc will produce an electric current as they travel through the circuit towards the copper ion that gain the electrons. So we know that the Voltex cell is commonly used as a battery, household battery. Okay, so the flow of the electron from one chemical reaction to another happen through external circuit, resulting in a current or electrical energy. The current is defined as measure of the number of the electron flow in a circuit at any given moment so let's look at to the components of the voltage cell this is when the two half cells are separated into two different containers so this is actually the same reaction as before okay however this zinc bar is dipped into a zinc electrolyte okay and then it is connected by external circuit by wire to the copper bar and this copper bar or copper electrode is dipped into electrolyte of the Cu2 plus and then these two beakers is then connected by a salt bridge. So if we zoom in what is happened in the first half cell or the zinc half cell or in this anode, okay, we observe that the zinc release its two electron and it turns to zinc 2 plus. Zinc turns to zinc 2 plus and then the two electrons released by the zinc will flow through this external circuit okay and then through voltmeter and then enter the cathode compartment and it is then received by the cu2 plus ion and the cu2 plus ion will undergo reduction and turns to cu solid
Then if we look at to the salt bridge, in this case, the salt bridge that is used is the sodium sulfate. So the sodium plus will go to the cathode compartment while the sulfate ion will go to the anode compartment. The zinc 2 plus ion that form during the oxidation enters the solution and would give it a net positive charge. We will have an accumulation of the cation in this beaker. Same goes with what will be happen at the cathode. We know that the Cu2 plus undergo reduction and turns to Cu. So it will develop a net negative charge as the Cu2 plus leave the solution and form Cu atoms. So if this is allowed to occur, a charge imbalance between the two half cell will happen and it would stop the cell operation. Okay, that is why the ion that is moving and A plus that is moving to this compartment will neutralize the accumulation of the negative charge species while the sulfate will neutralize the accumulation of the positive charge species or the zinc 2 plus here and balance back the charge of these two half cell. Therefore, we have to remember that the electron is always moving from and not to cathode okay, and then the positive ion from the salt bridge will go to cathode and the negative ion from the salt bridge will go to anode. Okay, both of the two beakers half cell, copper and zinc are electrode and then we have a salt bridge. Then we have a voltmeter. They are all the components of the voltaic cell. So the equations of the oxidation that is occur in the anode is zinc solid turns to zinc 2 plus equals plus 2 electron while what happened in the cathode is the reduction of the Cu2 plus equals turns to Cu solid by the addition of two electron. So the overall equation will be the same as before which is zinc solid plus Cu2 plus equals produce zinc 2 plus plus Cu solid. Okay, so this is what we'll observe at the end of this process. Okay, the mass of the zinc decreases while the mass of the copper electrode will increase due to the deposition of the Cu solid. So generally, in a voltaic cell, the electron will flow from anode to cathode over the wire. Then the charge of the electrode and not is a negative electrode while cathode is a positive electrode. And the cation from the salt bridge will flow towards the cathode while the anion from the salt bridge will flow towards the anode. A half cell is one of the two electrodes in a voltaic cell. And then a metal strip is referred as an electrode. And then the dissolved salt solution is known as an electrolyte. There are two purposes of the salt bridge, which is the first one to complete the circuit. And the second one is to maintain electrical neutrality in both compartments. Okay, there are two types of the electrode that can be used in a voltaic cell. It's either active or inactive electrode. For this previous example, a reaction between the zinc and copper 2 plus, okay, this voltaic cell is using an active electrode because zinc is one of the components of the reaction here and copper also the components of the reaction. Okay, and this is an example when we are using inactive electrode. Okay, in many cases, there are no reaction components that can be physically used as an end electrode. Okay, due to that, the inactive electrodes are used. And the most common inactive electrode that can be used as a, in this voltaic cell are graphite, which is carbon here, and also platinum.
in this case, the components of the anode is the iodine and iodide. None of them can be used as an electrode. Same goes with the components at cathode. We have MnO4 minus ion H plus and Mn2 plus. That is why in this voltaic cell, they are using graphite and graphite as the electrode.